This is Tony Poulos. I'm here today with Andy Farquharson, who is the Regional Director of Log Me In Asia Pacific. Andy, welcome. Good to catch up with you. I'm really interested in finding out the way telcos are interacting with their customers. It, it seems to be changing quite dramatically. Why is that and, and how are they changing? Look, we see really changing for, for two, main, two main reasons. Uh, the, the first one is that the consumer's changing as a person. I mean, they're, not only are they now more connected, so when I say more connected, I'm not just talking about the amount of time that they're, they're able to be in a range and, and, and actually get online, but what they're doing online is, is different. And so people are now spending up to 10 hours a week in social media. So this is, I mean, as, as a boss, it's not what you want to hear, uh, but 10 hours a week of social media is a lot of time communicating to your friends and family. And look, part of that, they're not just communicating, they're also uh, telling people about their products and services. I mean, your, your average Facebook user has 130 friends, your average Twitter follower has 300, so there's no shortage of avenues of these people to, to reach out and connect to their friends and families, which we need to listen to. So does this mean that contact centres and the way they're interacting with customers is changing as well? Absolutely. Look, at that, that's got to change. Uh, the reality is that they've never listened to these channels before. The contact centre environment usually, were, in the past, was just a single, two channels perhaps. Uh, so it was just chat and via the email. But now they've got to look at things like uh, I mean, SMS, Facebook, Twitter, all these different avenues that they've got to then be able to I mean, engage with the customer. But from there, it's then how do you then solve the customer's problem? So do you, do, you just have a proactive chat? proactive way to be able to enable them to resolve their issues. Do you just have a self-help scenario? Or do you just do the traditional model of, of, of being reactive? I think it's got to take a, a, it's got to take a comp composition of all three. If customers are complaining on Twitter, are, are, are telcos able to monitor that and, and proactively get to them before the damage is done? Look, there's a lot of tools out there that enable them to do it. Uh, okay, I mean, there's, I think, there's been some recent study out of the US that 79% of uh, negative comments on Twitter go unanswered. So there, it's, there are tools to do it, but whether the company's got the appetite or the ability to change is, is a big problem. With the changes in the way they're interacting with customers, how are, are the operators able to determine customer satisfaction, for example? Look, that's, uh, that's a big challenge. For, for, for a lot of customers, these contact centres traditionally, they used to measure their performance based on things like tactical metrics, like their KPIs of no fault found returns, uh, average handle time, uh, first, uh, first call resolution. These sort of old traditional metrics weren't so good, but now, as you said, they've got to shift to measure that customer satisfaction. So there are certain tools that are out there in the markets to, to help them do that. We hear a lot about net promoter scores. What exactly are they? Okay, so Net Promoter Score is really based around the, the whole question of would you recommend this service to your family and friends? So the, the, the value of it is, I mean, if someone would promote you, uh, that, that means that they're going to be of value to your brand. And it's the people who are negative or de what they call detractors from the brand who not only are going to be happy to pull their service, but they're also going to tell their family and friends. Now, in the past, you used to just tell your neighbour but now your neighbour is this much broader community uh, across the social networks. Who's more important to address? The ones that are detracting <laughs> or the ones that are promoting? Look, it's, there have been some studies done recently, uh, but so looking at, say, the, the, the telco industry in the US, where a, a, a promoter was worth sort of a bit over $600 in an annual revenue, but a detractor, on the other hand, they're worth a lot more, I mean, sort of a bit over $1,400. So, Everyone's got different measurements for how they're going to fi figure, that out, figure that out, but it's, uh, it's always a debate as to where to spend your money. It's spend your money to keep people or to win new business. So how do telcos and other companies go around valuing their customer satisfaction? Look, the, that, that value question's a, a very tough one, and it's one that sort of a lot of, uh, that, that, uh, a lot of vendors are struggling to understand. Uh, there's a lot of buzzwords which, which gets a lot of traction amongst senior management, things like social media and the like, but it's those easier to fix issues that, that we find are, are a lot harder for these people to, to put a, val a dollar value on. I mean, some of the tools, for, for example, which can give a, look, a very easy hit, uh, I guess, in, in terms of customer satisfaction, a measurable hit. I mean, one of the tools is, is Log Me In Rescue, for example. This is a, uh, a remote tool that enables uh, support technicians to remotely access uh, PCs, Macs, and, 
and smartphones of their customers to diagnose and solve these issues. Now this had to, compared to the past, like looking at those previous KPIs of uh, first call resolution, average handle time, I mean, it has a little bit of an impact there, but it really creates a wow experience for the customer and across those CSAT, NPS scores, it really has a positive impact. And are the customers happy with uh, being monitored in that way? Well, security is always one of the major questions we get. I mean, are they, going, are they going to want this service? And it's really, it's all very much permission-based and the customer's always in control. Uh, and it's, it's always a matter of positioning it to the customer as well. I mean, if a technician came and asked you, I'm going to take over your device, you'd be scared. But uh, the fact is the, t uh, the rescue tool gives the, gives the control to the customer and we also encourage the, uh, the uh, CSRs or customer support reps to uh, introduce the tool in a more polite way, like sharing control with, uh, with you. Andy, thanks for helping me unravel some of those customer satisfaction issues that have been plaguing me. Thanks for your time. Great. Thank you very much, Danny.